In this video, we're going to talk about sets and some features of sets, such as not having any order, random arrangement, and also not having any index, storing only unique values, and these types of things. And also, we are going to talk about methods of sets, some general methods, and also some mathematical methods of sets so please uh, stay tuned so first of all let's talk about how to define a set in order to do so we open a curly bracket and then we close that curly bracket and here we can pass different things of different types for example it can be integer it can be floats for example it can be a string it can be a tuple and some other stuff anyway so now if i print x and if i print type of x and if i run the code you can see it's a set and this is our set but now i'm definitely sure that you're asking at least two questions the first question is what is the difference between a set and a dictionary because both of them have these curly brackets and the answer is that in a dictionary we have a colon so we have for example we define a dictionary like this and as you can see, we have a key, then colon, and then the corresponding value. So this is a key value pair. In dictionary, we have key value pairs. And for each of those key value pairs, we have a colon. But in a set, we don't have any columns. So this is a difference between a dictionary and a set. The second question that you might ask is, you ask, when I was defining the set, the order of the elements was one thing but when i print it the order is completely different and what's even more interesting is that if you run the code again you might see a different order so for example if i run the code again there you go as you can see here we are seeing a different order in fact every time you run the code there is a chance that you will see a different order and you are probably wondering why that happens and the answer is that in sets the order is totally random so when you print it you might get a random order the next time you run the code you might get another order because actually it's random it is going to put all of those stuff in a random order so whenever you run the code you will get a random order of those elements because in sets we don't have any order although you might find it surprising but you heard it right we don't have any order in sets actually it's random the order is random and this characteristic i mean this randomness this randomness in their order leads to another characteristic leads to another note about sets and that note is this that sets do not have indices why because it doesn't have any order when it when the order is random you cannot say this is the first element this is a second element this is a third element all the stuff is random so you will not have any indices so remember that in sets we don't have any indices so as a result you cannot say for example x sub zero x sub one and so on so here if i run a code you can see it is going to raise an error why because in sets we don't have any indices and so you cannot say okay x sub zero x sub one and these types of things but now let's talk about the different types of elements that you are allowed to put inside a set as you can see you can put numbers in a set and also a string and also a tuple but what what about a list no you cannot store a list inside a set for example here if you define a list and if i run a code you can see it raises an error so you cannot store list inside sets and also you cannot store dictionaries inside a set and also you cannot store sets inside sets i mean you cannot have nested sets if you remember in previous videos we talked about nested lists nested tuples nested dictionaries but we don't have nested sets you cannot define sets inside sets but now let's talk about another key feature of sets and that feature is that sets ignore duplicate values 
for example, here, as you can see, we have a couple of twos and also a couple of threes. But if I run the code, we can see sets automatically remove duplicate values and only store unique elements. But now let's talk about how to define empty sets. So if you want to define an empty dictionary, you need to define that empty dictionary like this. And here, if I print D, and also if I print type of D, and if I run a code, you can see it's a dictionary and it's an empty dictionary. But how should we define an empty set? In order to define an empty set, you need to type something like this. You need to simply type set, and here you, we are not going to pass anything. So by doing so, we are creating an empty set. And now if I run a code, you can see now D is set. And as you can see, it's an empty set. Now let's talk about how to convert other data structures to sets if possible. For example, here, as you can see, we have defined a list named X. And now suppose that we want to convert this list into a set. In order to do so, we can pass the X list to this set function. By the way, this is not actually called a uh, function in this context because actually set is a class. And in this case, yes, we are using it like a function. That's why I call that function. But there are some technical terms for that, which I don't want to talk about it yet because we haven't covered those topics yet. Anyway, so as you can see here, we are passing X to this set function. And by doing so, we are converting that list into a set. And we want to store the results in a variable, let's say named Y. And now here, if I print Y, and if I print type of Y, and if I run the code, you can see here is the results, and now it's a set. Another important note, which you should have noticed, is that here inside this list, we have duplicate values. We have four twos. But as you know, sets ignore duplicate values. So when you're converting this list into a set, it is going to ignore duplicate values, and it is going to store unique values. So it is going to store only one of those twos inside this set because sets ignore duplicate values. But now let's talk about some methods of sets. For example, first of all, let's talk about how to add a value, how to add an element to a set. In order to do so, we can use the add method. And for example, suppose that we want to add a to this set. So that's the way you should do so. And after that, if I print the X variable, and if I run a code, you can see we have added A into this set. And now I'm definitely sure that some people are asking why it didn't maintain the order. And we have talked about this earlier in this video. The answer is that sets do not preserve order. This is because sets are unordered by design and elements are stored in a random arrangement. This is something that we have covered so far, I mean, earlier in this video. But now let's suppose that we want to, for example, remove this value. And for doing so, we can use another method called remove. And after that, we can pass the value that we want to remove. In this case, it is 100. So after removing this value, now if I print X and if I run a code, you can see we have removed that value. But now let's suppose that you pass something which doesn't exist inside this set. For example, let's suppose that you pass, for example, A. As you can see, we don't have any A inside this set. So in this case, if I run a code, you can see it raises an error because it cannot find any A inside this set but there is another method called discard which does the same thing i mean it removes a value for example here if you pass 100 it is going to remove that 100 from that set so if i run a code you can see it has removed it has discarded that value but the good thing about this method is that if you pass, for example, something like A, which doesn't exist 
inside this set. And if I run a code, yes, it's very obvious that we don't have any A inside this A. So it is not going to remove anything because we don't have any A inside this set. But it is not going to raise any error either. But as you have seen, the remove method raises an error when the value which we are passing doesn't exist in the set. But when it comes to discard method, no, it is not going to do so. And now let's talk about the clear method, which basically clears all the values, removes all the values from our sets. And after that, if I print X and if I run a code, you can see now, I mean, after removing all the values, all the elements of X and clearing all of them, as you can see, the result is an empty set. But now let's talk about some other types of methods of sets. As you can see here, we have defined four sets. Let's start with the as this joint method which basically checks whether two sets are completely separate, meaning they have no common elements. For example, as you can see, A and D are two separate sets. They don't have any common elements. So here, if I print something like this, if I print A dot is disjoint D, it means that I want to check whether A and D are two separate sets and they don't have any common elements. So if I run a code, you can see it returns true. It's like asking Python something like this. We are asking Python something like this. We are asking, hey, Python, could you please tell me whether these two sets are disjoint? I mean, they are separate from each other. They are completely separate. And when Python returns true, it means, yes, they are completely separate, meaning they have no common elements. But for example, here, if I simply pass B instead of D, as you can see, we want to check whether these two sets are separate, completely separate. And if I run a code, you can see Python returns false. It means that, no, we cannot say that these two sets are completely separate because actually these two sets do have some common elements like these two. And now let's talk about another method named is subset. So for example, suppose that we want to check whether A is a subset of C. For doing so, we can type something like this. We can simply type A dot is subset C. Basically, we want to check whether A is a subset of C. And if I run the code, you can see it returns true. It means that yes, A is a subset of C. But for example, instead of C, if I pass B and if I run a code, you can see it returns false. Why? Because we cannot say A is a subset of B. A is not a subset of B. Why? Because as you can see here, I mean in A, we have some values which you cannot find them in B. So it's not correct to say that A is a subset of B. That's why Python is returning false. Let's talk about the next method of sets, which is called is superset. There is an opposite concept to is subset, and that is called is superset. So here we want to check whether C is the superset of A. And if I run a code, you can see it returns true because C, because C is the superset of A. It means that C is a set which contains all the values of A. So that's why it is returning true. But here, if I, for example, type something like this, if I type is B a superset of A, and if I run a code, you can see it returns false because there are some values in A which B doesn't contain those values, which B doesn't have those values. So that's why we cannot say B is a superset of A. Let's talk about another method, which is called union, which basically calculates the union 
of two sets. For example, if I type A dot union B, I'm going to calculate the union of these two sets. And if I run a code, you can see this is the union of these two sets. Another method is intersection. For example, if I want to calculate the intersection of A and B, and I mean the common values, and if I run a code, you can see the common values, the intersection of A and B is three and four. Now let's talk about another method, which is called symmetric difference, which basically calculates all the elements in A and B, except those shared elements. So if I run a code, you can see the symmetric difference of A and B is one, two, five, six. Because as I've told you, symmetric difference means all the values in A and B, except shared values, except shared elements. So all the values would be one, two, three, four, five, six. But I said, except common except shared elements so these two are shared elements so that's why we should not consider them so the symmetric difference would be one two five six and there you go this is one two five six which is the symmetric difference of a and b this was one of the videos of a step-by-step -step tutorial playlist of python you can find a link to that playlist in the description below and also we have other playlists for other topics which you can find them on the channel page